Hello, thank you for attendance. Actually, it's much bigger than I hoped it would be. I'm Pepe on GitHub and uh, then Pepe on Twitter if you want to see my like a little bit more general ideas about life and world. I am a first pro Ruby programmer in the uh, in Czech Republic. I actually started with BASIC in 86 when I received my first Atari computer. And from the time I programmed in almost every language in the world, or at least every paradigm. And uh, here I am with Mats. Mats is, uh, Mats is uh, founder of the Ruby programming, or the, the chief programmer, the Ruby programming language. <coughs> this is uh, from Euroco 2010, where as you can see, uh, we had uh, great times. You can see Mats smile, I'll be talking about smiles and the, and the founders of the programming languages later, a little bit more. And uh, truth must be said that I am not too swifty and uh, maybe from a body uh, and not too functional also. But uh, lately, like last, last uh, summer, I actually uh, heard the call of a closure and I started to experiment mostly with closure script in the browser. And I found the paradigm um, quite, quite good and um, <coughs> fulfilling. Actually, uh, when I look uh, back right now, I can see that the, in, even in the Ruby, I used many functional programming uh, techniques, but didn't know that uh, they are functional programming techniques. And uh, <coughs> two years ago, when the Swift was announced, uh, I actually caught the wind and uh, started to experiment with it because I was a uh, hater of the Objective-C and I am an Apple fan and I like the Apple platform. Uh, so, so Swift was a thing at the moment. And uh, there's a, you can see that the guy at the party was pretty good, you know, the, even the Polish barman was quite excited about it. <coughs> so Swift through history, uh, it started as a, 2010 as a covered project of uh, Chris Latterner, which I'll be talking in the next slide. In 2014, it was unveiled actually on the WWDC uh, to, uh, I must say, unprepared me. And uh, I think that I will be not too long from truth that uh, unprepared uh, many people, even even guys like uh, Syracuse and uh, other like long Apple fanboys were quite unprepared uh, about what it uh, means for, for a platform and for programming languages as this. <coughs> uh, then uh, last year, the autumn, it was open sourced. And I, uh, I must say that I, for me, it was quite, quite surprised that it was open sourced in a big way that uh, it's actually on GitHub and uh, you, can, uh, you can make issues about the language. And it's not only the Swift uh, repo with the, with the language, but also the Swift evolution, as it calls, and uh, where are the, like uh, proposals for uh, next evolution of the Swift? So it was it was quite uh, quite I think nice sign of the future. It was actually uh, the builds were not only for macOS <coughs> uh, and uh, iOS platforms, but also for Linux. So so there maybe must be said that for me uh, Swift is okay on Apple platforms, but also I got a strong feeling that it could be a good platform for web and for general programming as well, uh, because it's, as we will see, it's based on, the, on some older uh, C-based uh, features. Uh, at, the, at the unveiling, it was called C without C. Uh, it meant that it's C like a systemic level uh, language. It's uh, from a, Apple perspective language, which could be used uh, for anything from embedded, uh, embedded environments to some high level application uh, development, but without the, all the craft, the C, or maybe all the H, more the craft, C, uh, C have, like uh, unsafety with the work with pointers and stuff like that. Uh, second, thing, second thing, which was pretty interesting for me, was a playground, uh, which is something like uh, REPL from other languages. 
uh, not as like not too like one to one, but uh, it works like a REPL, and you can just try to write something. And I'll show some playgrounds from the book I, I've been talking about. <coughs> so you will see that it actually works like a REPL, and you can see the, the immediate results of your, what you are coding. And the last thing, which was uh, which was quite uh, quite surprising or quite nice, was that it's a multi paradigm, so you can uh, write clear clean imper imperative uh, imperative code you can uh, you have uh, all the machinery of uh, object oriented uh, programming language and also it got uh, some uh, some uh, signs or features of uh, functional programming language so for me it was uh, as i said uh, quite surprising and actually nice that uh, apple is working on something like that and right now the, the version is on 2.0, oh, 2.1, oh, and uh, the next version 2.2 is on the way. And actually the evolution is uh, talking about the features of uh, Swift 3.0. And again, uh, it's not only for Apple platforms that could be, could be like thought, but it's for anything, you know, the, the Linux, Linux build actually talks about uh, how it could be. So the good man uh, from the from the summary is uh, Chris Latner, who I think uh, wrote his uh, dessert thesis on C Lake uh, C Lang Clank, <laughs> maybe the better name, and uh, LLVM, uh, which uh, are uh, the compiler from the from uh, for the future. Uh, actually, on some uh, <coughs> platforms sure for uh, Apple, but uh, even for some uh, BSDs and, uh, and uh, Linuxes, the LLVM and Clank actually replaced the GCC. Uh, he was working on, a, on, a, on those two technologies for a long time, and then he was snatched uh, for Apple, where he started to import uh, some of the ideas from LLVM and Clank into the Objective-C, uh, the maybe the most famous was the arc or automatic reference counting that you don't have to retain and release your your variables uh, <coughs> and it's done by the compiler quite crude way but uh, it's actually working and if you, anybody can remember the uh, the old objective c way of uh, doing stuff like that uh, knows that the, he knows that the, it's actually much better than the old way and again I'm uh, at the at the smile that you can see that the, he's got the nice smile and uh, for me because uh, I love to smile and laugh it's actually a good sign that the, of the founder of the programming language could smile and uh, have a nice smile like he got Uh, the good book, the, the, uh, another point from, uh, from the summary, is about uh, Functional Swift. It's the book I stole the name, uh, the soul and the body for this talk. So if uh, anything uh, I'll be saying here uh, will be like insufficient for you or straight wrong, which could be because, as I said at the beginning, I'm not uh, too Swifty and not too functional. I will point you to this book uh, as a reference because it's a quite nice book. It's written uh, by this trio, Eidhoff, Kugler, Swistra. Uh, the Chris Eidhoff is uh, against Chris, you know. It's a name for maybe the right things in the Swift. Uh, the Eidhoff is, uh, he's, uh, I think, a Hollander and living, uh, living right now in Berlin. He's a leader of of the of the of this trio. Actually, Objective C was the was the website uh, for a um, long time ago, and it was uh, the name uh, science uh, the about Objective C mostly. They got newsletter and everything. And what was interesting for me that after the Swift was announced, the those guys. Uh, quite quickly became uh, big proponents of the Swift, and it's uh, for me again a sign that the Swift had 
have it married and uh, it's actually something you should or, or and could think about. The book is a great read overall, not just for a fun uh, functional Swift, but also for a, for a, some general functional paradigm and uh, stuff uh, about the functional programming. But it's mostly about the Swift and uh, how you can use uh, some features of the functional programming in the Swift. And what is uh, what is great and what really helped me with the dealing with the book is that uh, part of the book are sources as usual these days for programming books but also that it got uh, playgrounds if there will be if there will be well and the time at the end i'll show you some and uh, here I, I i think i'll put the the presentation somewhere and uh, the bottom are the links to what i'm talking about on each slide so what's the uh, anatomy of functional programming in the, in the eyes of authors of this book? It's modularity, which is, I think, quite okay, because uh, functional programming, and uh, as I know it from uh, mostly from Clojure and Clojure script, one thing about not very nice about the uh, Clojure is that it's very modular and uh, its uh, its uh, uh, namespace system works really good way in, into this and all those like uh, refactoring into smaller functions and all the stuff actually works modular code then uh, same could be said not in that big uh, that big uh, range for a swift uh, the careful treatment of the mutable state uh, which is you can say oh we don't have any mutable state uh, we are all we are all immutable in our functional code. I don't think it's true because every system actually has some mutable stuff inside, and uh, uh, something is changing with the time or with uh, some interactions and stuff like that. And what is needed is a really careful treatment of it, and uh, that the mutable state should be uh, shared between the objects, and uh, should be re you should be really careful about what you can mute it and which is actually immutable and uh, through the functional programming program as you may or may not know it's one of the cornerstone of the of the stuff and, uh, and the last uh, part again uh, in the eyes of the authors of this book are types which could be could be uh, seen as a not really true, as especially when you are programming closure and something like that, which is actually typeless from the on the surface. It's not, but on the surface it could be seen as. But uh, the book is on this true pillar, is built on this true two uh, three pillars, and it makes sense in my eyes. Again, if you are not in agreement with this uh, this stuff. Go ahead. I I'll, I'll love to discuss about it at the end or with the beer in my hand. Then I am actually the best speaker. So, what are uh, signs of functional uh, programming again from the from the point of view of the authors of the book? It's uh, that the every functions uh, the, the the functions are actually first class citizens of the language that you can have uh, them in the parameters of the functions you can have functions which return functions <coughs> anonymous functions blocks and stuff like that uh, you can have type which is actually a function as we'll see in the, in the examples uh, higher order functions which is the functions which use the functions and stuff like that Again, with partial functions, total functions, all the stuff could be uh, could be simulated and used in the in the, in the Swift. Uh, then it's a uh, type related or more type related stuff, which is optionals. Optionals, if you are not uh, familiar with the with the term, are uh, are types which could be uh, nil or none, and or not and but or 
uh, the other type. So you can have uh, something like a, like a string optional, which uh, which could be nil or some string value. And there is a quite big machinery in the compiler and in the standard library to embrace this fact and uh, use it. Uh, there are like uh, conditional binding that you can have uh, if let uh, a equals uh, something optional that uh, the first branch, the true branch of the if will be executed when the optional actually has any value and uh, the false branch of the uh, of the condition is actually executed when uh, when the uh, the thing is not nil. Enumerations, which are actually quite similar to enumerations in uh, C-based languages, uh, it's a little bit more refined, a little bit more strict. And uh, through what we said, that the many things in the language itself is actually solved through enumerations, uh, like the optionals I've been talking about moments ago, they are actually enumeration, and one, uh, one uh, case enumeration is none, and the second is sum with some boxed value, which is actually the value I've been talking about. And the generics, uh, generics are something like, uh, I don't know, templates in the C++, we actually decide it's the best example, or generics in other languages like C Sharp, uh, which I don't know anything about, but was said to me that it's quite comparable. Uh, another big part of uh, programmers' lives and uh, things which are <coughs> important for, uh, for uh, every programmer, but I could say more important for functional programming are the stuff connected to sequences and lists. And so we've got all the nice stuff as the generators, uh, which is uh, just a protocol with two, two functions, next and uh, has next, I think. Uh, sequences, uh, combinators, you've got all the nice stuff we are used to from other functional program, uh, programming languages like map, reduce, filter, uh, stuff like that. It's uh, actually quite nice and it's all in the standard library of the language. And it also has some like ugly, ugly words, even, at least for my ears, like functors and monads. Don't ask me about those two last uh, things. And that's, uh, that's the overview or general, general view of Swift as a functional programming language. Uh, I don't think it's any like uh, substantial view of it, uh, but you can you know, just get a taste of the stuff and uh, then try to look at it yourself and, and make your own ideas about what I have said here. So everybody loves demos. So this demo is uh, quick and nimble. Uh, why it's named like this? Because there are uh, two frameworks which are actually quite connected in a Swift. It's open sourced. It was actually released uh, at, with the version one of the Swift. So it's from the beginning. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a testing frameworks which are uh, quite, quite similar to, to RSpec in Ruby. That's how I got to this because I was used to use BDD and RSpec uh, in a Ruby. And when I came to Swift, I was looking for something like that. And uh, actually, Quick and Nimble provide, provide me uh, with, with uh, stuff I needed. And let's go for uh, for a demo. Oh. If you got any questions about this, uh, not interesting, boring stuff, now is the right time, I think, because I will have, as always, ooh. Uh huh. 
a little bit of hmm. problems with it. Maybe, mm, no, it will be better this way. So this is uh, Xcode, which is standard. Make it a little bit smaller. Is it big enough? Can you read it even from a back row? From back rows? Yeah. Thank you. And why I'd like to show you the quick and, and the nimble. Uh, because when I started actually use uh, this framework, I found that the, even our spec in Ruby got a really big functional feel to it. And uh, before I actually realized it in the Swift, I didn't feel it like that. And uh, this code or some similar code I wrote from some, for some project actually uh, made me realize it. So uh, the quick spec is the is the is the spec class which you are inheriting. Who knows if it's good or bad because you know there is a big war in the objective oriented orienting, oriented world. If uh, inheritance or or includes uh, is what is the right way to to do things. Quick spec is going through inheritance and I don't see it as a, any bad thing. So you got this class which is inheriting from quick spec and <coughs> uh, what you need to do is to override uh, func uh, spec. Uh, here it could be seen that uh, it's one of the compiler sugar in the Swift that if you got one or the last parameter to the function and the type of the parameter is actually function. It could be write like the name of the function, uh, close the close the bracket, and after it you will uh, follow you follows the the block or closure, uh, which then uh, have all the stuff in it. And uh, as you can see, it could be nested. So the, the functional paradigm is actually here because uh, it's not uh, that usual in not in object-oriented programming that you got a function which uh, got parameter as close, close block or closure or anonymous function which could be nested and stuff like that. So here you got the description of the of the spec which is actually client bot from the right side. Uh, and here are the test cases. The, the class itself, the, the fun function spec, uh, describe and it, it's a part of the quick framework and uh, nimble is just expectation and assertive uh, framework. And here you can see that the, you got a function, which got first parameter, uh, it's the description of the test case and then you have the actual block with the with the code uh, which you are testing. So here, let is the immutable variable, which is actually uh, filled with the with the uh, instance of the client bot. This test I am re writing uh, the first time all the time, even in Ruby, which I'm trying if it's even possible to create, and it's not that. I want to be sure that the class could be initialized because it's actually usually language thing. But uh, it's for BDD or TDD even that uh, this first step must be read all every time because I got actually one really bad, bad bug in my code years ago where 
I actually named two things with the same name, which is possible in Ruby without any namespaces and stuff like that. And uh, everything works, <coughs> but not as I intended. So I'm always starting with this a bit stupid test case that the thing could be initialized. So here I expect that the client bot not to be nil. And again, you, you can see the traits of the functional programming that you have a expectation function and on A, I am, I am calling the function not to with the parameter B nil, which both those or all the three functions are actually part of the nimble, nimble, uh, nimble framework. Next is the some, uh, I would say default stuff, like it's got some default name. You can see that the uh, struct could be initialized uh, uh, with the default, default name bot. And it could be even initialized with the name. And the, and the last one is uh, tribute for uh, Alesh as an organizer that it got uh, some function uh, where you can scan if Raros is near B, which as I knew that he'll be here, I provided the default value true. Then if you just run the, uh, run the uh, test, the tests are built and you can see down there Uh, the I think quite s simple and normal uh, output of any spec uh, library I have ever seen. So you got the how long it t took to run the test, and uh, at the bottom is actually summary of a, of a, of a testing run. Again, why I'm showing this? This actually. Uh, made me realize that it's possible to have a, an anonymous function or blocks in a, in a suite and you can test them and you can do many like funny things like be truthy and, and stuff like that and again it actually uh, made, me, made me realize that uh, in our spec and Ruby we are doing the same stuff it's actually, I think, quite famous, famous uh, quote by, by the by the Mads when he was asked uh, why uh, why he made language, which is actually, uh, uh, or what kind of language is Ruby at the beginning, and he said that it got the uh, uh, functions, anonymous functions, blocks, and all the stuff. So it's Mads Lisp with. Algol, I think Algol is the syntax which is borrowed most in the, in the, in the Ruby. So that's, that's the demo of what I want to show. As you can see, struct is, uh, it's maybe one of the syntax or structural thing on the Swift that you got the classes which are reference, reference based and then you have struct which are value based so when you are copying uh, the struct from uh, one, uh, one variable to other, or if you are using it as a parameter to function, it's actually copy and write, so the new value is created on the run. Uh, actually, it's the same, same part of memory until it's changed. So that's the struct and some like basic stuff from, uh, from a Swift. And as a last example, I would like to show you uh, the actual playground, the actual play playground from a, uh, from a book that yeah, ten minutes. Yeah, ten, 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 
preview. So uh, here's our some definitions. You can see that you got the type aliases and stuff. Uh, you got a struct. You got the extensions to to do closed uh, structs or classes. And here is uh, some uh, like imperative solution for a problem of if the ship can engage ship uh, because as you may know ships could uh, could fire their cannons only if the position is bigger than uh, some some uh, proximity to the ship and uh, lower than the range of the cannons so here is a classical imperative uh, imperative stuff you can see that this is some uh, greater uh, lesser than and stuff like that but with a little bit little bit uh, more uh, pointed view and a little bit more functional view of the stuff you can start to make uh, quite interesting things like you can have type alias which is region in this in this uh, example which is actually as as in haskell or or elm which is actually function which uh, which returns boolean from a position which was up there defined uh, function and then you can have uh, function definitions or signatures which actually says circle with some radius which returns the region which is again this function and you can see it here that you are returning the block this part uh, before n is actually parameter parameters of the lambda and here I'm saying point length is uh, smaller than the uh, than the radius, and it's not like uh, I'm returning bool. I'm returning the function, and why? Because then I can uh, I can aggregate them into some some uh, some more take me a <laughs> complex uh, thanks uh, for some cl com more complex uh, expressions in your code so you have a circle which is quite quite understandable then you have a shift uh, when you are shifting the center of uh, of the region which uses the minus minus uh, minus member function of the of the point struct uh, then you have invert which just inverts uh, logically the region uh, then you have intersection which computes if those two regions are intersect you can have union which is actually union in or you can do the, the difference which is actually uh, application of the intersection and the inverted inverted value and uh, here is the is the second incarnation of the can safely engage ship with two ships uh, the first is the target the second is the friendly ship because you don't want to you don't want to uh, hurt your friendly ships in your in your positions and you can see that the uh, apply there applied all the functions which we just defined and we are returning this result region which actually is the again it's the block or closure with this one uh, this one uh, parameter which then returns bool if the ship can engage the other ship so it's the is the example of the playground from the book again uh, the, I and I even think that the playgrounds are for free that you don't have to uh, buy the book to 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 use them or to download them and there are uh, one playground for each chapter 
which I think it's like eight or nine chapters in the book. And again, great read and uh, many things came to my mind through reading it and uh, it actually made me want to try more functional programming and at the end uh, I am these days most fond of uh, the closure script which I liked as I haven't liked the Ruby like 12 or 13 years ago. Why I then uh, talking, why I am then talking about the script here? Uh, because I, I got the bad feeling uh, about the closure because uh, closure is not really junior language in my eyes. For a closure, you need to have big chunk of abstraction in your head, uh, which could be compost, composed and all the stuff. I know that the REPL and all the, all the things uh, really helps, but it's not that easy because all you have are, is our functions. With the Swift, it's much more simple or much more ordinary language in my eyes. It actually, mm, it's really similar to Ruby in my eyes or from my both like un unlearned eyes, it's, it's the most similar to Scala or or to Kotlin, Kotlin. <laughs> which I know just barely. So um, that would be it. If you got any questions, not really. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one will go. There's another example where you are using the uh, filter, which is actually function, it's type alias for function, which returns uh, CI image uh, from a CI image. And as you can see, it actually helps to wrap the not too nice uh, Objective C API for for working with the uh, with those uh, with those classes and and uh, with those machinery and uh, here it's the example how you can uh, how you can uh, actually make the the API nicer and even uh, composable so when you got all those functions defined, uh, then you can co compose them together like here. And uh, here is the first, I think, uh, that uh, the function could be current. So you can uh, just apply the function just partially and then uh, got like the other call of the returned closure or block. So you can see that, yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, here could be seen the, the, the preview or the REPL-like nature of the, of the playgrounds that on the right side you have uh, the preview of the of the things you are actually using in your code so the expression it's evaluated and the result of the expression is actually on the right side and maybe another interesting or nice thing in the swift that you can uh, you can define your own operator, which if you, if any one of you ever programmed in the C++, uh, you know that it's the straightest road to hell. <laughs> but in a Swift, they are saying that it's not that bad. I've never programmed actually in the C++, safe. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Brain fuck. And uh, carrying, as 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 Alex was talking about, it's shown here that you can you can actually carry the function that you got a function which returns function which takes int and returns int and stuff like that, and you can then write something like that, and it's called carrying. Oh, uh, it's it's it's. I think. Yeah, I think that it it. The, I think that it would must be that the the signature must be like this, okay. that uh, it's not that you are just partially applying functions which then return a partial function. But I'm not really sure about it. But I I, I think so. <laughs> so. In it. No, 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 no. I've never used it for bigger things, actually. I've used it for some s small and mostly application for iOS and the Mac OS. But I, I, I believe in the, in the power of the language. Because uh, I think that the uh, Apple platforms right now got the most developers in the world. You know, it's said like there's 200,000 companies uh, right now in the App Store. And uh, if you look at the if you look at the rocket rocket uh, rise of the GitHub uh, repo and all the yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's kind of what I meant that you are talking about it's now open source, but it's just a few years, but it's a lot of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great point. Yeah, th that's uh, that's what I can see. That the it's not only the the language as itself, but uh, many libraries and uh, and uh, and the frameworks actually spring as a, as a shrooms after rain, as they say. And there are actually like two bigger uh, web framework. One is like Rails in the Swift, so the bad guys, and the, and, the, and the second, much smaller and much more defensive. It's like Sinatra again. I'm using uh, Ruby, Ruby similar names uh, in the in the Swift, which is smaller and just like simple-minded and uh, and more focused on uh, on HTTP stuff and uh, route routing and all the stuff like that. But uh, uh, even uh, they are sprouting some uh, like Linux-only things in the Swift even these days, and it's like uh, less than a half year after it was open source and again i i, I believed in uh, i believe in the, in the strong position of a platform and and apple as a company and uh, till these days i think that even the like the process about the open sourcing and all the stuff went quite well and was actually nicely lead led that uh, even the m many things which were talked about before and uh, was actually decided in the Apple that it will be that way was then reverted on the community requests and stuff like that. And it must be said that the, it's open source and you can make issues and all the stuff, but the, the last word or the widow is still on Apple. And um, it's actually, I think, like a console which is, uh, which is actually presided, presided by, by the Chris Latner. The, the creator of the language. <coughs> and again, uh, why I believe that the uh, Chris Lettner got the right right ideas or right mind on the on the stuff is that the uh, LLVM and Clunk stuff is actually taking over the C world, even in other languages. You know? And I actually like the the paradigm that you got uh, some like static uh, compiling things, then you have LLVM, which is low-level virtual machine, which got its own uh, like bytecode, which is then transformed to the platform-specific code or the machine code. And it's, I, I don't think it's in in that level, but actually, the the end game would be that you have an interface for any any processors. Uh, architecture and you can have one code and run 
run it anywhere, which actually sounds like, like from, from Java. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know. Yeah, these days it's it's quite standard. Another question? So much, uh, when you talk about this committing feature, uh, it sounds good. Well, that's, that's Java now, so. Uh, <laughs> what is the situation now? I mean, how do you create an application or anything? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got the, you got the source. You, yeah, no, you got the, you got the source code, so you can build it anywhere. And there are, there are ports uh, like to BSDs and Linuxes. There is actually official build for Linux, and it's actually official for Ubuntu, like everything else. And the second one is for, uh, for, uh, for Apple platform. So be it be it macOS or iOS or Apple Watch or Apple TV. And uh, from this point of view, I think that the Apple right now, uh, I just read that the Apple is the biggest uh, consumer of the silicon, that they just surpassed the Samsung, you know, and Samsung is doing anything, you know, from, from uh, robot mouses to biggest TVs in the world. And they know from the, Pass that uh, you need to uh, have your own thing for your own platform. But if you use like they are using like I think three or four uh, processor or CPU architectures right now. So Intel, then it's the ARM eight or what is it in the iPhones and ARM seven in a in a watch and a Apple TV. You know then this discrepancies in the platform. <coughs> that it's easier if you got your own thing and the thing is pointed as actually in this way, or in this direction. And again, you know, there is a many like C programmers and Java programmers and uh, could be seen that it's actually, you know, curly brackets and all the stuff. Yeah, 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 and the, there, is a, there is a C bridge. Yeah, that's yeah, a great point. I think uh, on previous uh, demo there was uh, the wrapping of uh, C, uh, IPC uh, uh, interfaces. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, 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 the yeah, yeah. Because the Coco, the, the the standard standard libraries for a for a platform, which actually are right now like uh, refit for a Swift and uh, written for more idiomatic way over, over, over Swift. There's a foundation which is actually some like a core like a array stuff and stuff like that. And then it's Coco which is this like more UI and, and the process oriented stuff. So you have it all. And I, again I, I think that the, for some uh, juniors it's actually pretty nice language. And uh, what I haven't said, but it could be said, there is, a, there is a big book about Swift from Apple. There are tutorials, there are playgrounds you can download from Apple and try the things. So I, and I even uh, heard some talks uh, on the internet about how people already teach in Swift in the schools. And actually, I think that, that uh, famous Stanford Objective-C classes are right now in a Swift from this year. So I, I, I can see the, the, the promise. It's actually about uh, as of as last year, and they released a version from the iTunes. Yeah, 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 that's iTunes U, that's true, true. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs>